Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Estonia once again and we're going to have a look at yet another beer from a brewery that you've seen me review many things from before. But this is my first look at a beer from one of their more revered series that they do and I have to say I'm very, very curious about this one. So for this review then, we are going to go to Tartu in the southeast of the country, the second city, very beautiful place though I have to say, and we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Puasta Prulicoda. So this particular beer is from the Silver Series, which is their barrel aging project that they have. This one is a special version of the Black Blood, which is aged in Madeira barrels, and it comes in at 12.6% ABV, an imperial stout with um, beetroot added to it, actually. So quite an interesting one. I have reviewed the original Black Blood on the channel before, that was a few months ago actually, and the original version of this beer I think came in at 10.5% ABV, and that was a really quite quirky beer I have to say, so that one was pretty cool. But there's several versions of each uh, beer that they put into the Silver Series. I think there was bourbon barrel aged versions and um, a couple of other ones there, I forget exactly what. Uh, all the different versions that they had. But in the Silver Series, there's lots of different things. They take a couple of their beers and age them in lots of different barrels just to let you see how um, how that can affect the beer, actually. So it's a really cool idea, I have to say. But yeah, this one, uh, the Madeira barrels, I think, should be very, very interesting. I don't think I've ever had Madeira, come to think of it, but it's a fortified wine from the Madeira Islands, or the Madeira Island. Uh, which is kind of on the way down to the Canary Islands off the uh, the coast of northwest Africa. But um, yeah, I think this one should be a really, really interesting beer. Definitely curious to try my first in the Silver series from Puasta because I've heard some really good things about that. And a big thank you to Aero from Puasta for giving me this beer when I went to interview him a couple of months back. This is one of three um, Silver series beers. AOC reviewed on the channel. He actually was going to give me more of them, but I just didn't have the space in my case to take any more from him. So uh, yeah, that was really cool of him to do that. So massive thank you to Aero once again for uh, for making these Puasta reviews possible. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Very, very curious about this beer. And as I always say, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. Forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Puas de Prulicoda before, and you will no doubt see more added to that in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is that takes your fancy. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Estonian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to quite regularly at the moment because I do still have a lot of Estonian beers left. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Puasta Prulicoda then, on to my brewery notes. So Puasta Prulicoda, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Tartu in southeastern Estonia, the second city and home to the country's oldest university. And this company was founded back in 2016 by Eromander, Lauri Eideman and Yular Kalurand. So Lauri comes from a background in IT, whereas Yula was a businessman that specialised in restaurants and bars, and Aero was actually a DJ and studying theology, but at the same time he was a home brewer for a number of years and uh, he started back in 2011 when he brewed at his summer house in Pusa and this of course is where the name Puas de Prulicoda actually comes from. But he released his first commercial beers in 2014 under the name Blessed Virgin and this proved to be um, really quite popular and I believe that he met Lauri and, and uh, Ular who were just initially fans of the beers that he was producing and they wanted to help him kind of turn this into a, a proper business if you like and of course it's proved to be very very successful. Um, so they started out as a gypsy brewery, they were brewing a lot of their beers up in Tallinn and I think uh, they were brewing a number of their beers with uh, Poyala as well actually. Um, so they brewed in various other breweries around Estonia before they decided in 2015 that they were going to set up their own brewery. So they opened this in September of 2016 and you can find it on Tay Street in the southeast of the city. It's a former industrial laundry from what I understand. 
Uh, and they've already had to expand the, the fermentation capacity quite a lot due to the high demand for their beers and uh, they now brew somewhere in the region of 3,500, 3,500 hectolitres of beer per year. So that, if I remember rightly, is that 350,000 litres? Pretty impressive actually. Um, but they also have the Kelder Bar in the middle of the city which is their kind of tap room if you like. You can check out my out and about video I did there if you're interested. And as of December 2020 when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 165 different kinds of beer thus far. So yeah, quite a prolific brewery. They do some really really nice stuff and probably one of the best known Estonian breweries these days as well. So yeah, from that in that regard these guys are definitely worth checking out. I've had some really good experiences with these guys in the past, so I would highly recommend you try these guys if you're interested in Estonian beer. But you know, the standard of Estonian craft beer these days is very, very high. Um, there's a lot of good breweries there. I think they've got about 50 breweries in Estonia now, which is quite impressive when you consider Estonia is about 1.3, I want to say, 1.3 million people. So um, yeah, lots of good craft beer to be had in Estonia for sure. And Puasta, I guess, were one of the kind of founder, one of the kind of fa uh, first breweries to kind of get going over there. So um, yeah, that's it's pretty cool. But that's all I can really tell you about Puasta Prulicoda for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more about this brewery, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done and you can uh, have a little look at my interview that I did, <clears throat> my Meet the Brewery segment that I did with Puasta Prulicoda in um, when I was in Tartu actually, you can check that out and of course there's an interview in there with Aero Mander who is very highly regarded in the Estonian craft beer scene. He's a very nice guy as well actually and hopefully you can see him on the channel at some point when we do another festival video, that would be really fun. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. Make sure you check out all those links in the video description below. But yeah, as you can see, this one is really, really nicely presented. The artwork here, um, it is very, very simple to be honest with you. It's quite different to the other artwork you'll get from Puasta. But there you can see, there is the small batch thing there. But yeah, Black Blood, Madeira Barrel Aged. I'm curious to see what these Madeira Barrels do actually. And you can see it's got a little orange top on it. Um, all of the Silver Series beers, by the way, have the same artwork. It's just a different name on the front. And depending on what barrel they're aged in, usually they have a different kind of um, wax on them actually. All of these um, um, Silver Series beers are wax sealed. So um, yeah, this one is pretty cool. Like I say, a 12.6% Imperial Stout with uh, beetroot added into it and then aged in Madeira Barrels. It doesn't say how long it was aged for actually, but um, I would guess that it's probably about a year or something like that, but they will taste test these things and see how long they last, but yeah, quite cool to finally get around to having a look at one of the Silver Series beers for you, so let's just see if we can open this up. This is always the difficult thing with these wax seals. I thought about doing this before the video, but I thought, well, no, let's see about getting this, that should help it open a fair little bit. Yeah, there we go. Now we can go for this guy. There we are. Yeah, easy peasy. So that is your way to get around the wax seals, is just use a sharp knife put it in just underneath. And I mean look at how clean that's come off, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of smoke on the opening there. So we'll get this guy out and into the glass. Oh, look at that. That is crazy. I guess we're getting no head on this one. That looks silky as hell. Silky, silky, silky stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. So yeah, it says on the side here, a special version of black blood aged in Madeira barrels. That's all it says on the side here. Um, yeah, one thing I do, I would love it if the Estonian breweries did, is if they just put like a little, because it says SD here, I'd love it if they put like a little Estonian flag. I wish the European breweries would do that, put a little national flag on their um, on their things. I think that's pretty cool to kind of, uh, to show exactly where it's from. But um, yeah, I think this one. It's very, very nicely presented, and I'm excited for this, I have to say. So, as you could see, this thing poured very, very silkily. Is that a word? Yeah, it poured very, you know, you could see this beer is just silky as anything. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, if we shine the light through this one, 
you can see um, there is a wee tiny hint of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to this beer, but you know honestly. Uh, not a lot with this one, it's pretty much dark as night. There's one or two big bubbles are sticking towards the side of the glass there, but there are just one or two very small ones going up towards the surface of the beer. There's just a tiny little very dark tan uh, foamy layer around the edge of the glass there, but otherwise there's there's like one or two little wisps of um, of kind of bubbles on the top of the layer there, but this beer has absolutely no um, real real visible carbonation in it. But yeah, dark ebony rosewood colour, black as night basically. Uh, not too much more to say about it. Nothing surprising about the appearance, I have to say. The one thing that I would say about this beer, if I remember rightly, was that the original Black Blood had a sort of um, it had a sort of purpley tinge to it because of the beetroot, if I remember rightly. And you could see that when we um, we poured the beer, you could see it in the lacing. Of the, you could see it in the lacing of the um, the glass. Or, uh, you know, when you sugar the beer up like this, you could see that little purple tint on the lacing. And um, but in this one, you do not see that. So this beer has obviously darkened up a hell of a lot when it's gone through the barrel aging process. I mean, if it's a, you know, if it's a, 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 a how do you say, it? a fortified wine, you know, the inside of these barrels is going to be very, very dark and you know, very kind of burgundy and things. So you might have thought that it would give you a little bit. You can see that it's an almost like, you can see that there's a little bit of an almost like candy sugar brown or something to that when you do the lace in there. And you can see that there is a wee, wee kind of tinge of colour to this one, but it's not, um, you know, it's not um, as apparent as it was in the original Black Blood actually. So yeah, interesting point to make about this beer, but nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. Um, let's have a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Very, very curious about this one. Oh, that comes across beautifully, I have to say. I don't know how similar Madeira is to port, but it certainly comes across um, really kind of almost similarly in this one, actually. Um, so, I mean, straight away with this beer, you're going to notice that lovely kind of smooth, oaky backbone to the beer. It comes across as if, you know, it's very woody and oaky at the same time, but it almost just smells as if you've got a really kind of toasty, treacly brown sugar um, kind of infused into that wood. That's what you really get out of this one. Um, and you can smell the sort of, you can smell the kind of, the you can smell the kind of fortified winey kind of thing in there. You can smell those lovely grapes. Huge fan of grape juice, incidentally. I need to, you know, wine is something that I can appreciate. Pour, I, I can appreciate it, but I just don't know that much about it at this point. Um, I mean, the um, the aroma that comes out of this beer and the backbone is just absolutely lovely. And I mean, when you take this aroma in quite deeply, as I say, you've got the wood. Um, you've got the wood sitting in there. You've got the um, so yeah, you've got the the lovely kind of woody characters in there. You've got the um, how would you say? Um, you, you've got that almost kind of brown sugary kind of thing sitting on top of it, and then you've got those lovely kind of almost like dried red grapes kind of sitting in there. The woody side of the beer smells really, really quite sweet and um, and smooth. Actually, I really like how that. Um, how that goes together. I mean, it gets a big thumbs up from me in that regard. I really like the barrel aging on this and it is very, very quirky actually. I've never come across um, a barrel aged aroma in a beer that is, is quite like this one, I have to say. But I think probably the beetroot is um, playing a little bit of a role in that kind of grapey, fruity sort of thing that's coming off it as well. So yeah, I think there is something um, with that actually. So I mean it's very difficult to describe this one to be honest with you. But yeah, like a, as I say, a nice smooth kind of oaky backbone to it. Um, there's a wee bit of vanilla in there but it smells like it's very kind of like a toasty brown sugar coming out of this one. And um, then you've got a few, you know, you've got the, the, the sort of grapey notes from the wine sitting on top of that. It's almost a little bit sultana like in some ways but then you've got the kind of beetrooty notes too. So I like how this one um, I like how this one goes together in um, in that sense. So yeah, the, the, the barrel aged backbone of this is lovely, but let's focus on the rest of the beer. Um, so on top of that, you do get, you can smell like a lot of chocolate coming out of this one. It's like, um, I would say a sort of maybe 70% cocoa chocolate in there. It almost smells a little bit kind of powdered in a sense actually. So I really like how that, um, how that goes together. Um, yeah. 
It's got a nice, it, it really does have a little bit, it's it's like when you smell the inside of that Nesquik hot chocolate, uh, kind of chocolate powder type thing, that's what you get out of the um, aroma of this beer. You do smell a more kind of infused, like treacly molasses kind of thing coming out of this one as well. You really do smell quite a bit of that in this beer. Um, but there's one or two... Um, there is one or there are one or two other kind of really interesting things with this. I have to say, you do get a wee bit of vanilla out of it. Like I say, there's one or two little nutty elements in there. Um, but yeah, mainly the the beer that sits on top of that kind of barrel aging note smells very kind of treacly and molasses like. And then you've got that sort of powdery chocolate type thing that I was talking about in there as well. There's one or two little nutty um, aromas. Um, so yeah. It's very interesting from that perspective. On the hoppy side of things, remember when this is barrel aged, most of the, the green side of the hops will have kind of dropped away. Um, so I mean, you do get a tiny little bit of earthiness out of it. You get a wee bit of grassiness mainly, I would say. That's about as much of the green side of the hops as you can detect. Um, but the fruity side of the beer, I think, is um, is really nice actually. I love how the, the fruity side of this beer um, it goes together so it gets a big um, that gets a big thumbs up for me I think that's the, the kind of really interesting thing about this one so straight away with this beer you get a really nice um, raisiny sharpness almost you do get a lot of a you do get a big kind of raisiny sharpness out of this beer there's a lot of juicy plum to it as well it's got a real kind of like dried fruit like a, a, a figgy kind of prune dainty sort of prune kind of thing coming out of it actually um, and it's, it makes sense that you get these kind of dried fruits and grapey kind of notes um, so yeah and this you know the, the raisin sultana it does have a bit of that kind of sultana raisins and sultanas you know dried dark grapes and dried light grapes if that makes sense so that really makes sense about this beer there is a wee bit of a kind of plummy note underneath you definitely get a wee bit of um, a kind of figgy note but I think the fig is quite mild in this one I think it is more about the kind of sultanas and the dried fruits and, and things like that in this one but you also just get a wee hint of that kind of black currenty blackberry sort of thing but as I've said with the black blood from what I remember of the black blood the um, this whole thing was really accented by the um, by the beetroot and it's a bit difficult to pick up the you can smell the accenting if you like of the beetroot but you don't smell the beetroot individually in this beer to be honest with you so um, yeah this the aroma of this one I think is very very interesting and this is quite different to any other beer that I've reviewed on the, the channel before especially when we think about the barrel aged ones so yeah take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it but we're going to taste this beer now and see how we get on so yeah this one is um, one of the silver series editions of Black Blood an imperial stout with beetroot added to the brew it's aged in Madeira barrels it comes in at 12.6% ABV from Puas de Prulicoda in Tartu in the southeast of Estonia let's get stuck into this beer very very curious about it and thank you again to Aero for giving me this one let's get stuck in Slanja Skull oh yeah <laughs> I'm just going to say straight away, I can see why this series, if they're all like this, I can see why this series is um, is really revered. Um, and I'm going to say as well, compared to the other barley spears I've had, that is pretty unique actually. Um, so yeah, kind of, I'm actually really disappointed now that I didn't take up Aero on his offer to basically give me one of each of the things that he had. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a shame I only had space for like three of them. Damn. But um, yeah, this is a lovely, lovely beer, this one. Yeah. The thing that really strikes me about this initially when you take in, you're going to, the thing when you first take this beer in, you're going to notice how smooth it is and how silky it is. And then at the front of the palate, you really, the aftertaste of this one, you can just smell, you know, you can just smell. I always do this in these tastes and I mix up smell and taste. Stupid me. But um, yeah, you, at the front of the, the, the palate on this one you do get that kind of wet, slightly sharp beetroot juice coming out of the beer. So that's a really, really interesting uh, thing there. I really like how that, um, how that goes together in this one. So yeah, the flavour profile of this beer is 
really, really lovely. Um, <clears throat> so where to start with this one then? Let's start in the malty kind of barrel aging side of things. But yeah, like I say, the impact of this beer, very silky and almost just a little bit of sharpness from the, the kind of... Um, the beetroot juice in this one. So yeah, middle of your palate then and the back third of your palate you can feel that lovely smooth woody character just blanket in the middle of your palate there. It's got a nice kind of oaky note to it. What I would say about the wood in this one is it actually, and you get this with some types of barrel aging, the woodiness actually comes across as a little bit dry um, which is quite interesting. I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have expected that from the um, from, the, from the, the aroma in this one, but I have found that in fairness with different wine barrel agings, I do find that wine is one of the drier kind of barrel agings that you can get. Rum of course is very kind of smooth, whereas um, you know bourbon barrel almost comes across as very oily. It's quite interesting when you notice these little things about it, but yeah, this the, the barrel aging notes in this one, the woody notes actually come across as slightly dry in that sense, but they really work with these, um, with these big beers. Uh, in terms of the yeah, you, you know, that, that kind of dry woody character, that blankets the middle of your palate and it goes back toward onto the back third of your tongue as well. So I really like that about this one. Um, you can feel the sort of um, grapey infusion and things in that wood as well, to be honest with you. Um, what I would say about this beer, in a sense, um, it's it's got a beautiful flavour combination to it, but it's it's not quite as complex as I thought it was going to be, I have to say. Um, in some ways it's like a very straight shooting beer, but I really like the flavour composition. It's one of these ones that just everything kind of goes together very nicely. So yeah, good stuff. So yeah, I really like how this, um, I really like how this one um, goes together in that sense. So yeah. Um, where do we start on top of the, the woody side of the beer then? So yeah, um, if you go towards the back third of your palate there, you can feel there is a really nice sort of chop. On top of the middle third of your palate, we should say, you've got that nice kind of, um, you do have a little bit of an oily, <coughs> pardon me, an oily kind of chocolatey quality there. But the further you go into the aftertaste, it does dry out a little bit and it becomes more like a kind of powdery chocolate. And I would say that it's maybe around a 60% cocoa chocolate there. Um, it comes across as quite smooth and quite sweet. It's almost got a wee bit of a vanilla infusion to it. And in fairness, I said I wasn't getting much vanilla out of this beer. But if you just go towards the front half of that um, middle third of your tongue, you do get a wee vanilla infusion pushing its way out of this beer later on. So there is a wee bit of that in there, uh, and there are one or two little tiny nutty notes. If you go to the very centre of your palate, then push forward, there is a, a little touch of a nutty quality to this one. So I like that about this beer. So yeah, um, yeah, the nutty side of this beer um, just has a little interesting infusion, but on top of those nutty and vanilla flavours I'm talking about, that's when you start to get the beetroot and the fruits and stuff, but we'll talk about that a bit later. But yeah, as you go towards the back third of your palate, it almost feels as if there's quite a bit of oatiness on the back third of your palate, because the back third of your palate feels very, very thick and very smooth. When you go there, you can really feel the beer just thickening up a little bit, and to me, that's a sign of um, maybe, even a, maybe even a little bit of wheat, or maybe even a little bit of um, oats, um, but yeah, I mean this beer came out and it had no head on it, Very, and that's that's a kind of you, that's something that you can get with barrel aging in fairness, but um, the slickness that this beer has and the smoothness, that can be down to a bit of wheat or a bit of oats, so I do wonder that, because yeah, in the back third of your palate, again it's very very smooth, but then you get a very, you get, you can feel it thickening up a little bit, and you just get that lovely kind of chocolatey character out of it, but it feels like a more rich chocolate on the uh, the back third of your palate. But then as you move further forward, you've got that border region between the middle third and the back third of your palate, and the beer, I think, feels a little touch kind of bready in there, just a little bit like a kind of soft, homely brown bread kind of thing. Um, so that's quite interesting about this beer as well. But in the very, very centre of your palate, you've got a lovely, big, oily, um, brown sugary note coming out of the beer. Um, You've got a lovely big kind of treacle molasses sort of thing about this one. Um, so yeah, as you move out from the very, very centre of your palate towards the edge, you've got a little bit of a kind of biscuity, um, McVitie's digestive sort of thing that comes out of this beer. Yeah. 
you know, there is just a wee bit of a kind of biscuity graininess there, but I would say that that's quite minimal actually. Um, but in the middle of your palette, it's really interesting as well when the liquid lies on um, when the liquid lies on top of the the tongue, if you like, you really get that. You can feel the beetroot. You get that just little bit of kind of sharpness. I hate I hesitate to say tartness. It is more like a, a sharpness rather than anything. You do get that beetrooty type quality um, out of the beer. And then as you progress further into the aftertaste, the middle of your palate just dries out a little bit. And as I say, you get some of those nice kind of grapey and sultana qualities um, that come out of the beer. So I really like how that um, that aspect of the beer. Um, it goes together. Um, it's really, in, I have to say, that's a, a really interesting part about this one for me. Um, yeah, in that sense, I, I really, really like this one. So, um, yeah, the flavour profile of this beer in the middle of the palate, I think, is really, really quite nice. I think we've covered, it, it, it feels, this review feels a little bit more as if it's kind of all over the place compared to some of my other ones, but um, this, it, it, I think that covers the kind of malty um, backbone, the barley's backbone of this beer quite well. As I say, it's the woody dryness and stuff that comes out a little bit later on. But on the hoppy side of things then, as I say, most of the hoppy character will have dropped out of this beer at this point other than the fruits. But yeah, in the back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of, um, you do have a nice little touch of earthiness there. As you move further forward along the sides of the palate, it is a little touch herbal, and then as you reach the front corners of the palate, you do get a tiny little bit of a kind of floral aromaticity. Then round the very front curve of the tongue, the beer is definitely a little bit lighter and grassy. And then on that front third of your palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So for me, again, when you take this beer in, it's got a lovely little bit of sharpness to it from the beetroot. Yeah, so you do get a little bit of that beetroot in there, but then um, you can feel the beer almost has a little bit of a kind of, on, underneath that front third of your palate, the beer almost has a slightly kind of leathery kind of component to it, and you can feel the nice dryness of that um, Madeira barrel wood in there. It's really interesting how that um, goes together, but yeah, you get a little bit of sharpness in the, the beginning, a little bit of a Madeira sharpness to it, which I think is really nice. Um, or sorry, the beetroot sharpness, not the Madeira sharpness, but yeah, at the back of that front third of your palate, you do get a wee bit of a kind of plummy note to it, but then the, the, that front third of your palate is kind of dominated by these kind of dried fruity flavours, you know, like dates and prunes and things. It almost comes across as a little bit sort of fruit cakey in a sense. It's really, really a lot of dried fruit in there. Um, so you do get a wee bit of a dried apple-y, pear -y sort of thing. There's a wee bit of a kind of sultana type quality to this one, you know, dried white and green grapes. That's what I really get on the front of this, of the palate on this beer. So towards the back, there's a wee bit of that beetrooty sharpness, a little bit of a plummy raisin, you know, and then a lot of dried fruits kind of in between. And then on the very tip of your tongue, there is a wee bit of a kind of black currantty, blackberry type flavour out of this beer. So yeah, that's interesting with this one. Yeah, I would stick with that kind of assessment of the beer. And um, it's really got a little, just a little touch of sharpness on the front uh, tip of the palate there as well. So yeah, with that black currant, uh, I would say no more, more, more blackberry. Black currants are more juicy. Blackberries are a bit sharper. You do get just a wee touch of that sharpness on the uh, the kind of front part of your palate there. So I like how that um, how that goes together in this one. This is a lovely, lovely beer, this, and it's one that's definitely tested my palate a little bit, and that's what I want after 2,500 reviews. You want beers that are going to test your palate a little bit, and this one has certainly done that, so well done to, uh, to Puasta for this one. I think they've pulled off a solid, solid beer here. So, um, yeah, definitely has my seal of approval. In terms of the mouthfeel, then, um, what we're going to say about this? You know, I'm going to say this is kind of bottom end of full bodied. Carbonation is very smooth. It's really quite a slick beer, this, rather than anything else. It does have a real kind of slickness to it. In terms of bitterness and stuff, <clears throat> I think this one must sit about the 60 IBU mark. I find this beer more kind of smooth uh, rather than bitter, to be quite honest with you. There's a nice degree of sweetness to it, a little bit of dryness too. Um, a good little bit of kind of fruity juiciness and a load of other things in there. Um, in there as well. So I really like how this one 
Um, I really do like how this beer goes together in that sense. It's it's, still, it's just a beautifully done beer, I have to say. And, you know, I can see exactly, having reviewed this one, I can see exactly why the Silver Series from these guys is so highly regarded. And I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't just take all the beers that um, the Aero was um was uh, was offering me because his first question was how much space do you have um so he was basically going to give me one of each of these but uh, yeah we came away with three and two other uh, regular beers but um yeah all of the beers that he's given me so far have been um really nice actually so um yeah this one is no exception to the, the rule yeah puasta are very very capable when it comes to these um these imperial stouts but yeah lovely kind of juicy fruitiness to this beer. It's got a lovely kind of um, slightly dry backbone to it because of the barrel aging. Nice kind of smoothness and slight sweetness to the to the malty side of it though and just a little bit of a kind of hoppy character. I think probably about 50-60 IBUs for this one is a kind of adequate descriptor. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one then. This has been a really interesting review. So yeah, this is the, um, the Black Blood uh, Silver Series Madeira Barrel Aged Edition from Puas de Prudicoda, a 12.6% Imperial Stout with Beetroot uh, from Tartu in the southeast of Estonia. This has been a really, really interesting beer to review for you, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Puas de Prudicoda as well. We will no doubt return to these guys very soon. I do have two more Silver Series beers to review for you, so we'll see when we can get those published. But thank you again to Aero for making this one possible. Thank you to you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Slanja, Skull, do make sure you have a go at some beers from Puasta and from the Estonian craft breweries. Cheers.